Nitro presents Sting and Lex Luger versus the Super Assassins. Who are the Super Assassins, I hear you ask? Well, it's the Barbarian and Warlord, better known as the Powers of Pain. The Powers of Pain vs Sting and Lex Luger sounds much more appealing, but anyway, let's see what happens. Remember, Sting and Luger were in that triangle match at Starcade, yet here they are, still friends and still teaming together. Get prepared to enjoy some tiny split-screen action reminiscent of four-player Goldeneye on Nintendo 64, because Sergeant Craig Pittman interrupts the commentary team and this time he is seeking guidance from Steve Mongo McMichael. Mongo turns down the chance of a lifetime by telling the Pitbull that his hands are full as a commentator, the exact same excuse Bobby Heenan gave Pittman two weeks ago. I had to go back and watch the opening of the match again on the micro split screen and the match starts off with Lex Luger and Sting dominating the Super Assassins. By the way, the Super Assassins were known individually as Super Assassin 1, who was actually the Barbarian, and Super Assassin 2, who was previously known as the Warlord. By the time we get back to the action, the Super Assassins have taken the fight to the outside of the ring. The Stinger gets dropped on the guardrails and then he gets stretched inside the square circle. The Super Assassins double team Sting, the referee misses a tag to Lex Luger that gives the Super Assassins even more opportunities to punish the WCW icon. But the Stinger is able to make the tag when a top rope splash is missed by Super Assassin 1. The Torture Rack and the Scorpion Deathlock get applied at the same time and the babyfaces win the match. Point for Nitro, pay per view match replays aren't going to win many points here on Reliving the War. Mean Gene makes a comment about the new generation over on the WWF, saying that Sting and Lex Luger are mainstays of WCW while the new generation have added a few names who will soon be collecting their social security. The Scheme Gene stuff on Raw must have been cutting deep here, but anyway, Sting has a question for Lex Luger. The Stinger wants to know why Lex Luger stopped him from getting back into the ring at Starcade by holding his arm. Remember, this led to a count out victory for Ric Flair. Lex Luger says, get this, his knee was hurt and he was reaching out to Sting for support. He wanted Sting to help him back to his feet. Yeah, right, Lex, okay, whatever. Somehow Luger swings this all around, saying he wants to prove himself by becoming Sting's full-time tag team partner. Sting, for whatever reason, thinks this is a great idea, and the segment is over. And so this means we've now got a new tag team in WCW. The Stinger is in action next against Diamond Dallas Page, while Aldo Montoya will square off with Goldust over on Raw. The Page vs Sting match starts off with DDP putting out his cigar on Sting's face, giving Page a chance to take the early advantage with a series of strikes in the corner. DDP finds himself caught in the ropes though, allowing Sting to dropkick Page out of the ring and follow up with a dive over the top rope. A botched leapfrog leads to DDP taking the driver's seat for a little while, Page gloats and shows off to the fans while laying the offense in the sting. DDP hits a neck breaker but it only gives him a one count. He then applies a chin lock while using the ropes for leverage. Sting makes it to his feet but he's brought back down again by Page. It feels like this chin lock has been applied a little too long at this point. Sting once again makes it to his feet, delivering a face crusher followed by an atomic drop and drop kick combination. Sting then hits the stinger splash but Page is able to grab the bottom rope when the scorpion death lock is applied. Page hits another neck breaker but once again it gets him nowhere. Sting is eventually able to reverse a back suplex attempt into the scorpion death lock to pick up the submission win. This one went on a little longer than expected and while it was good to see Page get more time on TV, he still wasn't where he needed to be in terms of his in-ring abilities. DDP would be the first person to tell you that he needed to improve his ring work during this time period and thankfully Page would do just that and become a cornerstone of mid to late 90s. WCW, but he wasn't there during this Nitro match with the Stinger.
The Smoking Guns vs The Spiders is up next on Raw along with a Billionaire Ted skit, while we have a WCW title match on Nitro, The Nature Boy Ric Flair vs The Man Called Sting. Before the bell rings, Eric Bischoff lets us know that Sister Sherry and Colonel Robert Parker will be getting married in Las Vegas during the Clash of the Champions. Can't wait to sit through that. Ric Flair starts things off by trying to tackle the Stinger, but Flair can't move his opponent. Sting is able to show his athleticism by performing a few kip-ups in a row, and Flair can't believe what he's seeing. The Nature Boy tries to buy some time by throwing Sting out of the ring, but it's no use. Sting is right back in the ring, and Flair is now begging for mercy. I started having flashbacks the last week, if I'm honest, Rick wasn't getting any offense in during the early moments of this match, but a poke to the eye turns things around, the nature boy is now delivering his signature chops that echo around the arena and the stinger sells it well. Sting rallies back, eventually hitting a giant superplex from the top rope, but Flair reverses a splash attempt by getting his knees up. Both men are on the mat as we go to commercial break, and when we come back, Flair is back in the driver's seat, moving out of the way when the stinger tries a running attack before delivering the signature Nature Boy knee drop. Sting gets thrown out of the ring. Jimmy Hart gets a sneaky kick into the Stinger, saying, that's what you get, baby, after delivering the attack. But the Stinger is able to turn things around with a clothesline back inside the ring. Flair reverses a sleeper with a side suplex, and when Sting reverses a figure four attempt into a small package, the audience felt we were going to see a new WCW champion crown, but Flair kicks out. Flair goes to the top rope, leading to the Nature Boy inevitably getting slammed at the mat, and now Sting is firing up. The Nature Boy chops are having no effect here. Jimmy Hart gets on the ring apron, leading to Lex Luger coming down and trying to get Jimmy down. Sting tries to deliver the Stinger splash, but he gets hit with Jimmy Hart's megaphone that was being being held by Lex Luger. Flair locks in the figure four and Sting's shoulders are counted to the mat. One, two, three. Flair won't let go, leading to the Macho Man and Hulk Hogan storming to the ring as Luger, Flair and Hart disappear. A good match here with a typical Nitro finish. More promos next, we've got Savage Hogan and Sting getting interviewed by Mean Gene Okerlund, while Goldust is going to get some mag time with Vince McMahon on Raw. On Nitro, Hulk Hogan tells Sting that the reason he isn't the WCW champion right now is because of Lex Luger, and now there's no denying that Luger is Sting's enemy. Randy Savage tells Sting that he's been saying since day one that Lex Luger couldn't be trusted, but Sting is still dazed and confused after his match with Flair. Sting got knocked out, he can't remember what just happened, and when Hogan tells Sting that Lex Luger hit him during the match, the Stinger runs off backstage to find the total package. Hogan then takes a shot at the Macho Man, and get this, the Hulkster says that he should be the number one contender for the WCW title because Lex Luger has had Savage's number over these past lot of weeks. No Hulk, that would mean Luger should be the number one contender, not you. Hogan tries to convince us that he's been on a roll lately in WCW, but regular Reliving the War viewers would know that Hulk has been on a serious decline since Halloween Havoc 95. Yes, he was winning matches, of course he was winning matches, but his performances were getting worse as the weeks went on. Savage tells Hogan that things will be different when he gets a shot at Flair's belt. Hogan says Savage has a bad arm and he was beaten by Luger earlier in the broadcast, so again, somehow, this means Hogan should be the number Number one contender. The Macho Man has enough of Hogan's nonsense and he leaves the ring. Hogan tells Savage not to walk away from him and the segment is over. Remember, these two have a tag team match coming up at the Clash of the Champions also. I didn't really like this. Hogan's segments are now exercises and the Hulkster keeping himself in the limelight. And when you have the knowledge that we have nowadays around Hulk's creative control in WCW, watching this stuff back makes you feel kind of bad for everyone who had to work with this guy. But if WCW were stupid enough to give him such ludicrous benefits along with a truckload of money, then the company are just as bad. Harlem Heat come to the ring to defend the WCW Tag Team titles against Sting and Lex Luger, two friends who have had a really odd relationship. Luger and Stevie Ray start things off, Stevie is completely destroying the total package in the opening moments of the match and Harlem Heat are able to outsmart Lex when Booker T causes a distraction on the apron. Eventually Booker and Sting are tagged in, Sting completely cleans house with multiple Stinger splashes but Stevie Ray is able to break up a Scorpion Deathlock attempt. It's now Sting 
Sting's turn to take some punishment. Stevie Ray and Booker T are wrestling like a well experienced tag team here while Luger keeps distracting the referee. Sting finds himself in an armbar, the hold is broken up when both men get to their feet, but Sting is unable to mount a comeback. Harlem Heat's experience is coming into play as the commentators keep reminding us that Sting desperately needs to tag out. Harlem Heat by this point are destroying Sting. Sting tries to fight out of Booker T and Stevie Ray's corner but he keeps getting shut down. Lex Luger isn't doing his partner any favours by keeping the referee busy as the audience begins rallying behind the stinger. After applying a chin lock, Booker T goes to the top rope and a Harlem hangover is missed when Sting moves out of the way. Sting makes the tag but the referee doesn't see it. Jimmy Hart makes an appearance and he hands something to Luger when the action spills to the outside. Some sort of international object. And Lex Luger doesn't look suspicious here at all by the way, he looks completely normal and he doesn't have anything behind his back. Sting makes the tag once again, Lex Luger clocks Booker T with a roll of silver dollars, one, two, three, and we have new tag team champions. Again, Nick Patrick man, there's literally money laid out all over the ring and Patrick pretends to see nothing, what a shit referee. Still another title change here on Nitro, Sting is unaware that the win was tainted while Lex is over the moon. I'm giving the point to Nitro this time. Jim Cornette nearly got the point for Raw, but all in all, I enjoyed the WCW tag team match a little more. Sting and Lex Luger defeated Lord Steven Regal and Earl Robert Eaton in a good yet predictable match. Flexi Lexi and the man called Sting versus the Road Warriors. The audience are firmly behind Hawk and Animal here, again we have a loud LOD chant as the competitors get ready in the ring. The Stinger and Animal start things off, Sting goes for a wrist lock right away but Animal pushes the Stinger to the mat. Sting has to collect himself a little before trying again. Sting gets a headlock applied but Animal reverses with a front suplex. It's all for nothing though, Sting is able to get back to his feet and deliver a face crusher followed by a clothesline from the top rope. Luger and Hawk are then tagged in, Lex is able to hit a pile driver and just like last week, Hawk jumps right back up and delivers a shoulder block. Bobby Heenan tells us to never turn our backs on the Legion of Doom and that's sound advice. Sting is back in the match and Hawk takes control momentarily, Sting finds an opening and we see the Stinger splash, but Animal breaks things up when Sting goes for the death lock. With Animal now inside the ropes, Sting again gets overpowered but Lex Luger pulls the top rope down after Animal gets Irish whipped. Luger tags in and Sting isn't pleased with Luger's tactics here. The Stinger wants a clean match but Lex Luger is more than happy to take shortcuts. Luger begins working over Animal delivering a body slam followed by multiple elbow drops. The power in the arena then goes completely out for a moment. The feed gets cut off momentarily but we're back in business seconds later. I just want to point out that I really dislike how the WWE Network puts these messages on the screen whenever things like this happen. It's more distracting than the bad footage it's trying to explain, but anyway. Sting is now bringing the fight to Animal. Hawk tries to tag in, but Lex and Sting are working well together with quick tags. Luger delivers a picture perfect power slam, but Animal answers with a side suplex. The match then breaks down when Animal goes for the pin. Sting runs in to break things up, and this leads to Hawk rushing the Stinger and sending him to the outside. Animal no sells a suplex while Sting and Hawk fight outside the ring. A big power slam from Animal follows and then Jimmy Hart jumps on the apron holding what's described as a large lead plate. Animal goes to attack Jimmy Hart and this gives Luger a chance to pick up the plate. Luger smashes Animal's back and Luger and Sting get the win. The audience is booing, Lex is celebrating but Sting isn't happy. Mean Gene interviews Hawk and Animal immediately after the bout. Road Warrior Hawk demands a match against the winners of the WCW title match at Super Brawl. Animal Animal says that the Road Warriors will stop at nothing to get their hands on Luger and Sting at the pay per view. So we have ourselves another match then for Super Brawl. Whoever wins the Harlem Heat vs Sting and Luger match will face the Road Warriors later on the show. The Nitro broadcast ends with the commentary team running through the matches coming up at Super Brawl 6 and the final point goes to WCW Nitro. Lex Luger and Sting defeated Harlem Heat to retain the WCW titles. This means Luger and the Stinger will go on to face the Road Warriors later in the broadcast. 
Road Warrior Animal showed up and he hit Stevie Ray with a metal sheet. Sting didn't see the interference, remember? The Stinger wasn't very happy about the tainted wins that his tag partner was getting as of late. The Road Warriors vs Sting and Luger ended in a double countout. The Road Warriors seemed more concerned about beating up Lex Luger than winning the titles. As Big Bubba makes his way down to the ring, Eric Bischoff gives away the Raw results. Eric tells us the winner of the Jake Roberts match, the Diesel match and the Raw main event while calling the WWF the World Whining Federation. Nitro went on the air around 3 minutes before Raw and so Eric Bischoff had just told everyone what happened on the USA Network before the WWF show even went on the air. The Stinger gets a great ovation during his entrance, the bell rings to start the match and we get a lot of stalling. Big Bubba gives a clean break in the corner to show he's a nice guy, but Sting slaps him in the face when he goes for the handshake. Sting delivers his face crusher to the delight of the audience, but Big Bubba answers with an atomic drop, followed by an uppercut from the outside of the ring. Big Bubba applies a headlock, Sting fights his way out, but an impressive spine buster stops the Stinger's momentum. It's at this moment I noticed Bart Simpson sitting in the audience and there's a parrot right in front of him. Great stuff. Sting kicks out of multiple pin attempts before a chin lock gets applied. Big Bubba brings the Stinger to the corner. Sting again tries to fight back, but Big Bubba brings a splash to the Stinger that once again kills his opponent's momentum. Bubba continues to destroy Sting. The fight finds its way to the outside of the ring as a little old lady begins ripping into Big Bubba. I don't think this is a plant either because security come down to tell Grandma to sit the fuck down, maybe giving her some reassurance that Sting going over and there's nothing to worry about. Sting then delivers a questionable pile driver that could have went very very wrong but luckily Big Bubba is okay. The two men get to their feet to trade punches, Sting gets the better of Big Bubba, Sting goes to the top rope but Bubba gets the knees up, Sting gets thrown out of the ring and Big Bubba goes upstairs. Sting is able to stop Bubba's attack, Sting delivers a flying crossbody and the match is over. Sting wins via pinfall and hopefully Grandma has calmed down. It's a point for Nitro. The Road Warriors interrupt a planned interview with Sting and Luger. Animal says that the Road Warriors have been tight with Sting for a long time, but Hawk and Animal aren't too keen on the Stinger's relationship with Lex Luger. Luger wants a little backup here from his tag partner, but Sting's head looks completely fried. He obviously doesn't want to go over all this stuff again, and to be fair, this rocky relationship between Luger and Sting has been going on since the beginning of Nitro. Lex Luger has been saying that he's from the main streets of Chicago, and Sting tells Lex that the Road Warriors are from the streets. Luger then begins throwing out challenges to Hawk and Animal that Sting clearly wants no part of. Luger ends up agreeing to a tag team Chicago street fight and when the Road Warriors leave the interview, Luger reveals to Sting that he has no idea what a Chicago street fight is. Sting gets pissed off and he too leaves the interview. This was one of Luger's better promos in recent weeks due to how oblivious he acted but I'm still giving the point to Raw. The Undertaker stuff was pretty good in comparison to the Nitro promo. Renegade hits two clotheslines followed by a power slam. The Renegade then hits a cartwheel back elbow followed by a bulldog, which admittedly looked pretty good. Jimmy Hart then shows up and he pushes the Renegade off the top rope. This allows Lex to apply the torture rack for the win. Jimmy Hart celebrates with Lex Luger, but then Sting shows up. Sting isn't happy that Jimmy Hart and the Total Package still have some sort of relationship. Sting says to Lex that it was either Jimmy Hart or the Stinger. Luger tries to say he didn't know Jimmy was going to interfere and Sting begins screaming at Luger before the segment comes to an end. Luger vs Renegade wasn't a good match but it was way better than Shinobi vs Ahmed Johnson so it's a point for Nitro. Booker T teamed up with Sting to defeat the Road Warriors in a Chicago street fight, a Chicago street fight held in Mississippi. Sting and Lex Luger's tag titles were on the line, but because Luger was wrestling in the main event, Booker T teamed up with the Stinger, and if Sting and Booker won, then Harlem Heat would get a tag team title match at a later date. The match dragged on, if I'm honest, at nearly 30 minutes long, but the pre-match promo featuring Booker and Sting was great. The charisma of both of these guys possessed was off the charts. 
The American males get a WCW tag title shot against Lex Luger and the Stinger. During Sting and Luger's entrance, Lex would only high five the fans when Sting was looking. As soon as Sting turned his back, Luger looked pissed off at the fans. I thought this was a really nice touch. Scotty Riggs and Luger start things off. Luger grabs a headlock, but Riggs answers with two picture perfect drop kicks. Riggs hits a back body drop and he celebrates with Bagwell afterwards. This fires Luger up and Lex goes on the offense. Luger takes out both American males, but Bagwell pulls Lax to the outside. Sting then grabs Luger, trying to calm the total package down a bit, while Marcus gets tagged into the match. After Lax talks a ton of smack to Bagwell, Sting gets tagged in. Sting isn't very pleased about Luger mouthing off and tagging himself out. The audience gets seriously pumped up when Bagwell and Sting go through an Irish whip sequence that sees multiple leapfrogs, ending with Bagwell hitting a back body drop. Bagwell Bagwell tries to body slam Sting, but Buff Daddy can't lift his opponent. Sting hits two body slams on Bagwell, and the audience goes nuts. It's really awesome seeing how much Sting was loved by WCW audiences during this time period. Scotty Riggs comes back into the match, Sting tags in Luger, and Riggs is able to get the better of Luger before Bagwell gets tagged back in. Bagwell too gets the upper hand after delivering a splash to a grounded Luger. Lex then dodges a crossbody attempt, and afterwards Afterwards, Lex begins to viciously attack Bagwell. Sting looks on, and again, the Stinger doesn't seem very happy with how Luger's conducting himself during this match, but Lex continues to destroy Bagwell. Eventually, Sting and Riggs get tagged in. The Stinger is able to deliver a crossbody on Riggs, and Sting scores a pinfall win. Sting celebrates with the American males, while Luger celebrates on his own on the outside of the ring. A point for Nitro then, a much better match from WCW that had better in-ring action and better storytelling. Over on Nitro, there's no intro and there's no formal introduction. Sting and the Giant are in the ring and ready to go, so let's take a look at our first matches. We have the debut of Mick Foley on Raw, it's Mankind vs Bob Holly, while Nitro presents the Giant vs Sting. The Giant and Sting were supposed to be teaming up this evening, according to Eric Bischoff, but Jimmy Hart had paid off the Giant and Harlem Heat, so we now have a one-on-one -on -one match. Sting spits on the Giant, the Giant gets mad, and our match is underway. Sting targets the Giant's leg, delivering a chop lock right away, followed by another from the top rope. It looks like an effective strategy, but it doesn't keep the Giant down for long. The big man doesn't move an inch when Sting hits a running crossbody, and the fight spills to the outside where the Stinger gets thrown into the guardrail before being tossed back into the ring. The Giant attempts a choke slam from the ring apron, but Sting is able to reverse the move with a drop kick. A nice little spot here. And then Lex Luger just appears out of nowhere. The bell rings and the match is over. Luger didn't even touch the Giant, and the Giant also didn't get counted out, so I'm not even sure what the official ruling is supposed to be here. I assume Sting got DQ'd, but I've no idea. We then get the WCW Nitro introduction video, we go over to Bischoff and Company, and we then see a clip from before Nitro went on the air. Jimmy Hart gave Harlem Heat an envelope, but we didn't know what it contained. The commentators guess it was money or some sort of bribe, and that explains why the giant faced Sting instead of competing in the scheduled tag match. WCW were trying to hook viewers in right away here, and you have to appreciate the battle plan, but the execution was poor. The Sting vs Giant match simply didn't deliver. Over on Nitro, we have Sting and Lex Luger taking on The Giant and Ric Flair. Bit weird seeing as how The Giant and Ric Flair were battling each other just a few weeks ago, but let's see what happens. Flair again goes after Deborah McMichael, who's sitting at ringside, and doesn't Deborah look really, really different here? The tag champions come to the ring, and yes, the tag titles are on the line. Flair goes after Sting, but the Stinger can't be kept down tonight. Look up at the audience, and you'll see a few fools getting put in the torture rack. A shoulder tackle and double leapfrog sequence ends with Flair taking a press slam. A second press slam is nearly messed up when the Stinger launches Flair over the top rope. This could have been better if I'm honest. The Giant throws his partner back into the ring as Luger gets tagged in. Flair again gets tossed out of the ring. It looks a little cleaner this time. And again, the Giant throws the Nature Boy back into the ring. Flair is pissed off at the Giant. He runs out and he chops his tag partner across the chest. And then he 
runs back up the entranceway. We go to commercial break and when we come back it's like nothing had happened. Flair is taking punishment from Luger and the giant is back in his corner. The giant gets tagged in and Luger gets destroyed. The big man steps on the total package before tagging out. So there seems to be harmony here between the nature boy and the giant. Luger gets tossed out of the ring and woman rakes Luger's eyes. The giant brings Lex back into the ring and Flair continues the punishment. It's very strange seeing Flair in the driver's seat for so long. Normally Flair is bumping around the ring for other people so this is a nice change. Quick tags by the nature boy and the giant results in the heels maintaining the advantage. The punishment in the ring reminds Mongo McMichael of how he used to abuse his little sister's Barbie dolls. I'm not kidding, he actually said that. Luger finds himself in the figure 4 leg lock. This is the fourth figure 4 we have seen this week on Nitro by the way. Woman lends a helping hand and Nick Patrick ends up in a pushing match with the nature boy. In the end, Flair proves to be his own worst enemy when he goes to the top rope, leading to Luger launching the nature boy straight to the mat. The stinger finally gets tagged in. We see a lot of fire as the nature boy takes a beating. The cameraman gets wiped out after the Flair corner bump. And then we see a picture perfect superplex from the man called Sting. This match comes to an end when Sting goes for the Scorpion Deathlock. The Giant and Luger begin fighting in the ring as the hole gets applied. Woman sneaks up holding a cup of coffee. She goes to throw it on Luger but Lex ducks out of the way. The coffee goes all over Sting and the referee calls for the bell. It's a DQ finish. The Giant destroys Sting and Luger after the bell and Bobby Heenan says that Luger knew exactly what he was doing here. This was a setup by the total package. A solid enough main event from Nitro this week. Main event time, the Portuguese Man of War Aldo Montoya takes on Mankind on Raw, while WCW Nitro give us Flair and the Giant vs Lex Luger and Sting one more time. Bischoff is still talking about how the Giant can pin Flair in this match to win the world title, but he makes no mention of Sting pinning Luger to win the TV title, even though all belts are supposed to be on the line here. It's a complete mess from a booking standpoint, but let's see how the match played out. Flair again takes the time to give Deborah McMichael a little attention and then Randy Savage runs in to try and attack the nature boy. The macho man once again gets handcuffed and he gets brought back to jail. Poor Randy is now getting arrested for performing wrestling run-ins. Sting and the Giant start things off. The Giant overpowers Sting but the Stinger fights back with a few drop kicks. Drop kicks that have no effect on the big man. Luger comes in to help out and the giant gets clotheslined over the top rope. The nature boy gets press slammed and sent to the outside also and the audience are loving it. A great ovation here for Sting and Luger. The nature boy and the total package get tagged in. Slick Rick chops Luger but Luger no sells it. I absolutely love Ric Flair's reactions when he does this. He turns around and he violently shakes his head in surprise. Luger sends Flair crashing to the mat and Flair finds himself eating the canvas when Sting lends a helping hand from the apron. Lex tags out and Sting lays in the punches. A hip toss gets followed up with a drop kick, but the nature boy looks pretty pleased with himself when Sting runs into Flair's back elbow. Flair takes the top rope bump and then Sting hits a superplex. Rick then finds himself on the outside and Sting lines up the Stinger splash against the guardrail, but Sting is unable to hit the mark. Woman takes advantage by raking Sting's eyes and the match gets back inside the ring with with the giant and flair making quick tags. Eagle eyed viewers would notice Jimmy Hart passing something to woman down at the bottom of their screen. I thought I just saw something we weren't meant to see but no, the cameraman gives us a full close up of woman holding a cup of coffee, her new weapon of choice. Flair takes a power slam from Luger and this prompts the giant to get into the ring. The giant goes for the choke slam but Sting hits two diving chop blocks from the top rope. So check out this ending. The giant eventually gets floored and Flair is all alone with Luger and Sting. Woman passes the coffee to Flair. Flair throws it but Luger and Sting jump out of the way. The coffee goes all over the giant. 
The referee then calls for the bell. It's another DQ finish as predicted. It's such a bad finish too. It should have continued on. Flair's actions gave his team a disadvantage and it's kind of an unwritten rule that the match doesn't get thrown out if your underhanded tactics backfire. Still, the giant is livid. Flair comes back out. He gets on his knees to beg for forgiveness but the giant doesn't want to accept any apologies. Mean Gene gets a word with the giant and the big man says he's coming for Flair's world title. The Giant vs The Nature Boy next week on Nitro. Flair is at the commentary table now and The Nature Boy says he tried to say sorry and now The Giant has to apologise to Ric Flair or The Nature Boy will kick The Giant's ass next week. The Giant chases Flair to the back and Eric Bischoff confirms that next week on Nitro we will see Flair vs The Giant for the WCW world title. A pretty standard Nitro main event then, why they bothered with all this every belt is on the line nonsense though I have no idea. It meant absolutely nothing and it led to absolutely nothing. There's quite a bit of time wasting before Sting and Booker T eventually lock horns. Sting gains control of the wrist but a big kick from Booker puts the stinger in his place. Sting replies with a high speed clothesline followed by a body slam and an elbow drop. Luger comes into the match to a course of boos. Stevie Ray gets tagged in and the audience doesn't know whether to cheer or boo when Stevie begins hammering Luger in the corner. The total package gets the audience on his side though after giving Stevie Ray a taste of his own medicine. Sting gets tagged back in, we see a little double team offence, but Stevie Ray eventually rakes Sting in the eyes before Booker comes back into the bout. Booker hits a shoulder tackle but the Stinger comes back with a leapfrog and a drop kick that gets the crowd making some noise. We come back from commercial as Booker T hits a sidewalk slam. He misses an elbow drop but Booker recovers with a spinner rooney followed by a jumping sidekick. Really impressive stuff here from Booker T. Booker's smooth moves make Stevie Ray's follow up kick look extremely rough in comparison. The Stinger takes a beating here, the crowd breaks out a Sting chant as Stevie Ray keeps the pressure on. Booker T comes back in and an opening gets created when Sting and Booker hit a double clothesline. Luger finally gets the tag, he takes out both of his opponents, we see a big power slam from the total package, but his flurry doesn't last too long. Harlem Heat take Luger out with an assisted elbow drop and then Jimmy Hart runs down and he tries to throw in the towel. This also also happened on WCW Saturday night. Booker catches the towel, Jimmy Hart gets dumped into the ring, but Sting comes from behind and Booker T gets rolled up. Sting and Luger win the match. It's a bit strange seeing the Stinger take the cheap win, especially since he's been giving Luger a hard time about being a dick. I think it was supposed to be unintentional, but come on, how can you miss Jimmy Hart standing there with that suit on? Still, this was a good, no-nonsense tag team match. Regal vs Sting then on Nitro. Regal plays up to the crowd a little before launching an attack. Sting quickly turns the tides, sending Regal to the corner before delivering a back body drop. Sting then goes for the Scorpion Deathlock, trying to end it early, but Regal rolls out of the ring as Nitro takes a commercial break. When we come back, Sting is still in control. Regal backs off into the corner before again working up the crowd a little. The two men trade wrist locks, but Regal breaks it up by making his way to the ropes. And as Regal shows off a little to the crowd, Sting, Sting does this. Moving on, Sting fires up the audience but Regal brings his opponent down while maintaining wrist control. We see that British joint manipulation in play as Regal bends the Stinger's hand before crossing Sting's forearms around his own neck. Sting gets out but he allows Regal to poke him in the eye. The crafty Englishman is taking every opportunity presented to him. Stiff forearms follow from Regal but Sting eventually replies with a dropkick followed by two Japanese arm drags. Regal gets sent to the corner for a Stinger splash but his lordship moves out of the way. Regal's reaction afterwards was fantastic. And then Regal goes for the double underhook. Sting reverses with an overhead back body drop while the arms are still clenched and Sting picks up the victory with a bridging pin. A good showing here from both men and a very pleasing match for fans in attendance. Another point for Nitro.
Duggan gets choked again and he falls out of the ring. The giant brings him back in. The big man goes for a running corner attack, but Duggan moves out of the way. Hacksaw then tries to tape up his fist, but it's no use. The giant hits the choke slam and it's all over. The giant retains the WCW championship. The giant hits another choke slam after the match. A bunch of mid card guys run down and they too get choke slammed. And then the nature boy Ric Flair shows up with a wooden chair. The chair gets broken over the giant's head, but the giant feels no pain. Flair begins backing off before Sting comes to the ring. The Stinger is able to take out the Giant and the crowd completely loves it. And just as Sting applies the Scorpion Deathlock, Jimmy Hart jumps in and he hits Sting with the megaphone. Just as Sting was about to take care of Hart, Lex Luger shows up and the Giant and Jimmy Hart leave the ring. Mean Gene wants to get a word with Luger and Sting. Sting wants to know where Luger has been and why was Luger throwing away opportunities like this. As Luger goes to reply, Nitro goes off the air. They ran out of time. I'm unsure if this was a regular WCW Nitro cliffhanger that we're going to have to get accustomed to over the next few months or so, or if they legit messed up the timing here. Remember, the NBA was coming on live right after this show, so there was no room to go over by a few minutes. Anyway, the final point goes to WWF Raw. The WWF had an overall better main event match. There are no entrances for the WCW main event. The competitors are already in the ring after a commercial break. Eric Bischoff apologizes for Ric Flair saying the word ass on live TV. We'll have none of that edgy language around here, thank you very much. Lex Luger tries the Ric Flair strategy by throwing himself at the Giant, but that never works. The Giant hits a big clothesline, but Lex gets up. He tries to slam the big man, but the Giant just grabs Luger by the face and throws him out of the ring. Lex reverses a suplex attack and the total package tries to bring his opponent down with clotheslines, but again, this never works. The Giant grabs Lex in midair and the total package gets slammed from corner to corner. The Giant chokes his opponent with his boot for a bit and then Lex tries to hit his bionic forearm, but it has absolutely no effect on the WCW champion. We see Ric Flair enjoying some food at his VIP table as the match spills to the outside. Luger is finally able to hurt the Giant a little when he knocks him off the apron. The giant grabs Luger and he drags him out of the ring. The two men go over to the nature boy's table and Lex Luger gets choke slammed through the furniture. The ref calls for the bell. We have a DQ finish. Jimmy Hart has to jump on the giant's back to stop the attack and the stinger shows up to check on his tag team partner. Gene Okerlund tries to get an interview but Sting tells Mean Gene to leave. The show ends then with Lex Luger not getting a PS5. The final point goes the raw. The Giant successfully defended the World Heavyweight title in his match with Sting. Lex Luger cost Sting the match when he accidentally hit his partner with Jimmy Hart's megaphone. The Giant then hit the choke slam for the victory. Slamboree 1996 won't win any pay per view of the year awards. The Cruiserweight and US title matches were decent, but with 15 matches to watch, it's a seriously overbooked wrestling event. Tag Team Champions Lex Luger and Sting take on Meng and the Barbarian. Ric Flair has joined the commentary team and he's brought food, drinks, women and candles. What a great guy. Flair says that Heenan can touch the girls but Bischoff can keep his hands to himself. And Flair also says that Ted Turner loves it when the Nature Boy shows up for commentary. Jane Fonda is also a Flair fan apparently. Remember, Luger pretty much cost Sting the WCW Championship at Slamboree. So let's see what happens during this match. The tag titles are on the line here. Lex Luger and Ming start things off and already Flair is proving to be a great commentator as he brags about beating guys like Wahoo McDaniel and Ernie Ladd. Slick Rick even compliments Lex Luger's ability to move his pecs on command. Ming makes quick work of Luger before the Barbarian gets tagged in. Sting comes into the match as we go to commercial break. Before cutting away Flair sings Where Oh Where is Mongo McMichael and he also sings Debbie does the nature boy. Fantastic stuff. We come back and Ric Flair is singing once again as Sting performs a double arm drag. Have a listen. Ric Flair. You do a little dance, make a little love, get down tonight. Let me see that. Stinger, get down. Ah. 
Sting applies a bear hug, but the Barbarian dodges the follow-up dropkick. Ming gets back in the ring and, as much as I love seeing Sting in WCW, these Luger and Sting matches are beginning to get seriously repetitive, with Sting needing to make the hot tag. The Faces of Fear begin making frequent tags, both legal and illegal. Sting takes an atomic drop in a big boot combination from Ming and the Barbarian, and then the Barbarian delivers an insane belly-to-belly -belly suplex from the top rope. This looked pretty good. Sting keeps kicking out even though he's taking a beating here. The Faces of Fear hit tandem diving headbutts, but Luger distracts the referee when Ming goes for the pin. Sting begins to fire up a little, and he nearly makes the tag, but he's brought right back to the opposite corner. Ric Flair says that Kevin Green and Mongo McMichael should get put in a warm-up match with the faces of fear as the Barbarian misses a diving headbutt. This gives Sting the opportunity to make the hot tag, and even though I complained about these Luger and Sting matches always being the same recently, it still works very well. The crowd pops for the total package coming in and cleaning house. Eventually, Lex and Ming fight on the outside while Sting deals with the Barbarian. Sting hits a top rope splash and Luger dashes in to get the pinfall win. Bobby Heenan rightfully says that this doesn't make any sense. Sting's acting like Luger didn't get involved in the Slamboree title match, but still it's a point for Nitro. Sting hits up Ric Flair's VIP table to steal some cheesy treats before beginning his match with Scotty Steiner. Scott and Sting trade takedowns to begin the match. Heenan says Sting has the advantage here due to Scott being more experienced in tag team matches, but Steiner is definitely holding his own here at the beginning of the bout. Sting fires back with an explosive dropkick followed by a middle rope back elbow. Scott finds himself on the outside and this gives Sting an opportunity to hit a plancha. Back inside the ring, Scott slows the Stinger down with a double underhook powerbomb followed by a belly to belly suplex. Sting rolls out of the ring and Steiner hits a double axe handle from the top rope. Sting kicks out a two back inside the ring and then a big boot in the corner nearly takes Steiner's head off and Heenan can't stop laughing at this spot. Payback comes in the form of an overhead belly to belly suplex from the future Big Papa Pump. Steiner applies an STF as Sting continues to get destroyed in this bout. Steiner then locks in an arm bar, but when both men get back to their feet, Sting is able to hit a scorpion death drop. Keep in mind, this wasn't a Sting finisher just yet, neither was it called the scorpion death drop. Sting hits a stinger splash, but he misses the second attempt, resulting in Steiner hitting a dragon suplex. Lex Luger and Rick Steiner then show up as Steiner hits a Samoan drop from the top rope. Scott then signals for the end, he misses a Frankensteiner, and Sting goes for the death lock, but Steiner is too close to the ropes. Scott then goes for a tombstone pile driver, but Sting reverses with a tombstone of his own. This has been a good main event for sure. Both men are spent here. A suplex spot from the apron to the outside goes wrong. Not sure what happened here, but this leads to Lex Luger getting involved. Rick Steiner and Lex begin fighting. The fight finds its way into the ring. Sting and Scott get involved, and the referee throws the match out. It's a no contest. Bocce work Bobby Walker and a bunch of WCW guys try to keep things under control, but it's pandemonium to end Monday Nitro. And we still aren't done yet. Nitro gets another point. Mean Gene interviews Sting and Lex Luger in the locker room, footage from last week's brawl gets shown, and the total package gets questioned about his involvement in the main event match between Sting and Scott Steiner. Luger doesn't get a chance to defend himself as the Steiner brothers interrupt the promo, Rick says Luger tried to cheap shot his brother, and Scott says he'll take care of the total package tonight if he tries to pull off any more cheap shots during the tag title match. Luger and Steiner push each other around, Mean Gene's says he won't tolerate this nonsense during his interview segment, and both teams split as the interview comes to an end. Before the match, footage was shown of Regal hitting Sting backstage last week. Mean Gene tells Regal that he's now got a hefty fine to pay, but Regal says he paid double, so he's in credit with the WCW committee. Regal wants the Stinger, and a challenge is laid out for the Great American Bash. 
While the finishes of WCW's main events leave a lot to be desired, it's something we have to get used to. I fully expect this tag team match to blow the WWF's main event out of the water though, it's the Steiners vs Sting and Lex Luger. As the match begins with Sting and Scott in the ring, Randy Savage phones into Nitro. Randy says he's been suspended from in-ring competition, but he is allowed to coach Kevin Green and Mongo McMichael. Randy accepts the job and Bobby Heenan tries to beg and plead with the Macho Man, but it's no use. So at the Great American Bash, Heenan will be in the Horseman's Corner while Savage will back up Mongo and Green. While all this was going on, Sting and Scott traded offense in the ring. We go to commercial break right after the phone call, and when we come back, Rick Steiner has Lex on the mat. Luger takes a clothesline, we see a massive belly to belly from the top rope, and Rick then hits a diving bulldog. Luger tags in Sting, Sting hits the Stinger Splash, and we then see the Scorpion Deathlock. Scott Steiner runs in to make the save, and Scott then gets tagged in. The Stinger takes a belly to belly suplex, and then Scott delivers a top rope Frankensteiner. It's all high octane action here on Nitro, and the change of pace in comparison to Monday Night Raw is absolutely unreal. Lex Luger breaks up the pin, Steiner goes for a suplex, but Sting reverses with a Scorpion Death Drop. Luger then comes into the match, he delivers a power slam on Scotty Steiner, and then a torture rack attempt gets broken up by Rick. Luger then tries to suplex Scott on the outside, but Rick again makes the save. The match then breaks down with all four men brawling in the ring. Rick Steiner and Sting take it to the outside, and Sting gets backdropped on the ramp. Just then, the giant shows up, and the big man delivers one of the softest chokeslams in wrestling history on the dog-faced gremlin. Even Eric Bischoff has to admit on commentary that the giant didn't get all of the move. The WCW champion then holds down the top rope, and this causes Scott Steiner to hit a cameraman on the outside. And then Nick Patrick throws the match out, it's a double disqualification. Lex Luger and the Giant fight in the ring, Scotty Steiner and Sting come in to help the total package, and the Giant gets clotheslined over the top rope as the segment comes to an end. The final point goes to WCW Nitro for obvious reasons. Sting and Ming, try saying that five times fast, Sting and Ming, Sting and Ming. But Sting and Ming had a short match next and the Stinger got the win with the Scorpion Deathlock. Billy Kidman had only been in WCW for a few months and here he is getting a big TV match against Lord Steven Regal. You have to go into this one with the right expectations. You know it's going to be a squash match and you know it's going to be short. Regal destroys Kidman right from the opening bell but Billy fights back with a drop kick to the back of the head. This allows Kidman to also hit a tornado bulldog before the young rookie goes to the top rope. Kidman misses a 450 splash and his lordship's reaction afterwards is not Nothing but pure gold. I love this era of Lord Steven Regal so much. Regal drills Kidman with a suplex and Billy taps out when Regal applies a modified Boston Crab while standing on poor little Billy's head. Regal's great American Bash opponent Sting then runs down and Regal takes a slap to the face, a little payback for a few weeks ago. Regal is then left embarrassed as the segment comes to an end. It was an entertaining few minutes here on Nitro, but I'm still giving the point to Raw. The Mero vs Skip match was just better. Sting and Lex Luger vs Flair and Anderson then. Another bout we've seen before on Nitro, but unlike the public enemy and the Nasty Boys, these guys can actually, you know, put on wrestling matches. Remember too that this was supposed to be Joe Gomez and the Renegade in the main event, but now Flair and Anderson have managed to get themselves a tag team title match. Flair tries to push Sting around before the opening bell, but Sting's having none of it. The total package and the Nature Boys start things off and immediately, Flair brings Luger to the corner for some knife edge chops. Luger screams at Flair, Flair tries to run away, and the Nature Boy takes a press slam for his troubles. Luger makes quick work of Flair and the Enforcer, and the Horsemen take their regular time out on the outside to gain their composure. Back inside the ring, Luger destroys the Nature Boy with another press slam. Rick then takes the corner bump and Sting nails Flair on the apron. 
Nate gets suplexed into the ring, Lex misses an elbow drop, and the Enforcer and the Stinger get tagged in. Double A overpowers Sting, but Sting outsmarts his opponent. Basic stuff, but fundamentally sound. A leapfrog sequence ends with Sting hitting a face crusher, and Ric Flair comes in to take yet another press slam. The Nature Boy then grabs a steel chair from his broken VIP section, and Double A comes out too to take another break. We come back from commercials and Double A is having a hard time keeping up with Luger and Sting. The Nature Boy stares a hole through the Stinger after getting tagged into the match, but unfortunately, Flair isn't able to do much damage. Sting misses a Stinger splash, but he's able to follow up when Flair goes to the top rope. Flair then hits the mat hard after a superplex as Bobby Heenan tries to coach the horseman from the commentary desk. Arn breaks up a pin attempt and Flair delivers a thumb to the eye before Double A gets tagged back in. The Enforcer hits his signature spine buster, but Sting kicks out at two. The two men test each other's strength on the mat, but this ends with Anderson taking Sting's knees right in the balls. Anderson sells it very, very well. Flair comes back into the match, but his back gives out when going for a suplex. Anderson makes sure that Sting can't capitalize, and even when Sting gets the upper hand, the referee is distracted by Lex Luger. We come back from the final commercial break, and Slick Rick is taking care of Sting on the outside. Sting desperately needs to tag out as Double A goes for a Vader bomb. Sting gets his knees up again, and finally, Lex gets tagged in along with Ric Flair for the final time in this match. Luger cleans house, Flair takes press slam number four, and you can see the audience standing and looking at the entranceway. Out comes the giant, and a fight breaks out between the WCW champion and Lex Luger. Scott Steiner shows up, and the giant gets nailed with a wooden chair. And the Giant decides to back up when Sting, Luger and Steiner begin beating him up. So we have another match on Monday Night Row that's been thrown out. On the rampway, Mean Gene interviews the Giant and the Giant says that Luger will pay at the Great American Bash and the total package is going to leave the pay-per-view on a stretcher. So which main event was better? I'm going to go with Night Row. Sting vs Lord Steven Regal was up next and Regal topped out to the Scorpion Deathlock. This was another good match that's worth checking out. Larry Sabisco and Tony Schiavone let us know that Eric Bischoff is still recovering from Nash and Hall's attack at the Great American Bash. We get a promo with Sting, Lex Luger and Randy Savage. All three men are wearing Sting war paint and all three men are ready for Bash at the Beach. Randy wants to get a little payback on Steve Mongo McMichael for last week so he bails. And while Sting and Luger begin discussing the mystery third man, the Steiners and Harlem Heat show up. It's announced that Sting and Luger will defend the tag team titles later tonight against both teams in a triangle tag match. A big tag team match ends this week's episode of Monday Night Row, the Steiners, Sting and Luger and Harlem Heat. The titles are on the line and everyone is still on edge about the outsiders potentially showing up. Booker T and Scotty Steiner start things off and Steiner gets the upper hand. Stevie Ray lends a helping hand from the apron and Booker applies a headlock but the advantage doesn't last long. A double underhook powerbomb from Steiner gets the crowd going but Lex Luger breaks up the pin. Stevie Ray and Rick Steiner are in next. Stevie Ray brings the action straight to Rick but the dogface gremlin replies with a German suplex. Scotty Steiner gets tagged in and he voluntarily tags in Sting. Bit silly to take yourself out of a triangle tag match when the titles are on the line, but sure. Sting gets brought straight to Harlem Heat's corner and the icon takes a beating. Booker T comes into the match once again and he goes for a jumping sidekick, but Booker instead gets caught on the top rope and this gets a great reaction from the audience. Sting pushes the top rope up into Booker's nutsack. Sting then hits an inverted atomic drop. Tony Schiavone calls this an inverted power bomb for some reason. Booker then gets his knees up when Sting comes off the top rope, and now Stevie Ray is back in to dish out more punishment. We come back from commercial break and Sting is still getting hammered. The crowd again chant we want flair, but it looks like the nature boy isn't hitting the ring tonight. Harlem Hater double teaming Sting and Lex needs tagged in, or either Steiner brother to be fair. 
Booker T gets back in the match, he misses a top rope splash, and the Stinger manages to tag in the total package. As Luger begins cleaning house, the camera zooms out and the outsiders show up from the audience. As Hall and Nash approach the ring holding baseball bats, a bunch of cops storm the ring, and in the middle of the commotion, Harlem Heat win the tag team titles. A diesel chant breaks out as Hall and Nash stay on the outside of the ring, threatening to attack at any moment. What you have to consider here is how bad this made WCW look in a way. The Outsiders were able to hold off 6 WCW superstars and their police protection. What hope did WCW really have if they looked this afraid of the Outsiders? Anyway, it's a great ending to Nitro this week. Hall and Nash walk away slowly, while Bobby Heenan shows a lot of concern at the commentary table. Bobby says he's now afraid for his own well-being when he's just trying to do his job. Nitro gets the final point. A Rey Mysterio highlight reel begins playing on Nitro, but the video gets cut off. The outsiders are moving around in the crowd and they have a live microphone. Nash says that the takeover is happening a little early, and Scott Hall says, look, Donny Osmond has come back in regards to Eric Bischoff. The outsiders try to approach the announce desk, but security rushes in and Hall and Nash are kept at bay. Luger, Sting and Savage show up, and the outsiders laugh at their face paint. Within moments, the whole WCW locker room comes out to get the outsiders out of the building. This was some great stuff. Rivalries had been thrown out the window. Heels and babyfaces of WCW are standing together to get these two out of the building. Bischoff and Heenan look concerned as Nash and Hall continue to taunt the whole WCW roster. The crowd begin chanting Diesel as Hall and Nash leave. Heenan says the outsiders may be gone, but what about the third guy? He could be anywhere right now. And Eric Bischoff reiterates the fact that Team WCW is ready for Batch at the Beach. Again, good stuff here. The use of different camera angles and everyone banding together really made this feel different. You have to give it to Bischoff and WCW for trying this, and really, they are totally knocking it out of the park. And then it was time for the hostile takeover match. Nash, Hall and the mystery third man against Lex Luger, Sting and Randy Savage. Mean Gene interviewed the Outsiders at the beginning of the match trying to find some answers about the third man, but Hall and Nash said they have enough right now to take care of business. The Outsiders wrestled this match without the third man, but Lex Luger was also taken out pretty early on, so essentially it's a normal 2 on 2 tag team match. Nash hits a low blow when Savage signals for the elbow drop, and then Hulk Hogan comes to the ring. It looked like Hogan was there to help his old friend Randy Savage, but Hogan hits the Macho Man with a leg drop as Bobby Heenan screams that Hulk Hogan is the third man. More leg drops follow and fans witness something they thought they'd never see. Hulk Hogan just turned heel and it was an absolutely brilliant move. You guys know by watching this show every week that Hogan had become incredibly stale. This move right here gave Hogan's career a real shot in the arm. As fans throw garbage into the ring, Mean Gene gets an interview with the Hulkster, and Hulk says he got bored with WCW. Hogan says for two years he held his head high, and he'd done a lot of work for kids and charities, but because of the reactions Hogan had gotten from WCW fans, he decided to go to the dark side. The Hulkster says Hall and Nash are the future, Hall and Nash are the new blood, and the New World Organization is taking over. Yeah, he forgot the name of the faction here. So it all changes from this point. The NWO are now part of WCW programming, and the rivalry between NWO and WCW would take center stage for the foreseeable future. Sting looks pretty dejected after last night's pay-per-view. He gets in the ring and Arn Anderson tries to shake his hand, but Sting won't do it. He's had too much history with the horseman just to forgive everything due to what happened at Bash at the Beach. Sting does give a clean break in the corner after the initial lockup though, and afterwards the Stinger takes Anderson down with a shoulder block. 
Eric Bischoff then announces that we have company. The outsiders have shown up and Bischoff wants to wait it out to see what happens. Sting and Double A trade hammerlocks before Arn throws his opponent out of the ring. Arn then goes for a pile driver on the outside but Sting reverses with a backdrop. Sting allows Arn to get back in the ring as we take a commercial break. When we come back, Sting is in control. From out of nowhere, Double A fires back with his signature spine buster, but the enforcer can't follow up. Bischoff says that a black limousine has just pulled up to the MGM Studios entranceway, and Eric says there's too many kids here and not enough security. <laughs> what did he really think the NWO were going to do here? Arn is giving his opponent a beating now as a Sting chant breaks out in the audience. Any goodwill between Sting and Anderson seems to be thrown out the window as Arn applies an abdominal stretch. The enforcer cheats by using the ropes for leverage. Sting gets out and he goes for a splash but Arn gets the knees up. Arn is then able to apply a Boston Crab and then we see the limousine sitting by the MGM Studios entranceway. Arn chokes Sting on the middle rope and Double A goes upstairs. Sting manages to hit a jumping clothesline to stop Double A in his tracks and then we see the outsiders walking towards the ring. Once Hall and Nash get the ringside, the action completely stops as both Sting and Double A invite the outsiders in for a fight. Even the macho man Randy Savage shows up. Double A then tries to go for a cheap victory but Sting applies the deathlock and it's all over. Sting wins via submission. Mean Gene interviews Sting afterwards and Sting says he isn't surprised at what Hogan did last night. When Sting and Savage were travelling on the road, Hogan travelled alone in his limo and Hogan disappeared time and time again to make movies. Sting says that Hogan just made cameo appearances during his time in WCW, but what he did at Bash at the Beach was a mistake. Kids had looked up to Hogan and Hogan told those fans to stick it last night, but Sting tells Hogan that he can stick it. Savage also sends a message to Hulk. The Macho Man tells Hulk to think about the worst thing he can possibly dream of, multiply it by 9 million, and then multiply that by infinity and beyond. Savage must have been having too much fun at Disney here. And what Hogan ends up with will just be a little grain of sand in the Sahara Desert in comparison to what the Macho Man is going to do to the Hulkster. Another easy point for Nitro this week. Mean Gene then interviews Sting, Luger and Savage and Lex Luger thinks Ric Flair is probably sitting in a limousine somewhere. Sting says there's only one guy driving around Orlando in a limousine right now and it's not the nature boy, making reference to Hollywood Hogan. Mongo, Chris Benoit, Woman, Elizabeth and Deborah come out to the ring but Arn Anderson and Ric Flair are nowhere to be seen. We come back from a commercial break and Double A is looking inside a white limo trying to either work out who is inside or where Ric Flair currently is. Anderson gives up and the horsemen huddle up, nobody knows what's going on but it looks like Arn, Benoit and Mongo are going to go this one alone without the nature boy. Bischoff and Heenan then discuss the possibility of Ric Flair joining the NWO but Heenan says there's no way that could ever happen. The babyfaces come to the ring getting a great ovation from the audience and our match gets underway with Anderson and Sting starting things off. Sting completely takes control and he takes out Double A and Chris Benoit, but Big Steve McMichael stops the stinger with a shoulder block from the middle rope. Sting ends up on the outside and Benoit gets in a cheap shot and the enforcer chokes Sting inside the ropes before Benoit comes back in. Benoit brings the intensity to the icon in the corner and then Steve McMichael gets tagged in. You always watch Mongo very closely just waiting for the inevitable botch fest but Steve hits a neck breaker that looks absolutely fine. Sting fires back with a crossbody but Mongo pulls off a dropkick and no it wasn't the most elegant dropkick but it was still very passable, I've seen worse. Benoit is back in the ring and again Sting takes a beating as the cameras show us the white limo parked up at the MGM Studios entranceway. Savage once tagged in but the Stinger can't build any momentum here. The Enforcer is back in and Sting nearly makes it to his corner but Mongo stops his opponent from making the tag. 
And then it happens. Don't know what on earth Mongo was thinking here, but the lack of communication leads to this mess right here. Sting's in a bad place now. He can't get out of the horseman's corner. The icon and the enforcer trade sleeper holds, but Arn ends up getting dropped with a side suplex. This allows Sting to finally make a tag to Lex Luger, and the total package shows a great deal of fire while destroying the horseman. All six men begin brawling in the ring, and when Mongo asks for his magical briefcase, Woman stops Deborah from handing it over. This was quite strange, and it leads to Randy Savage taking control and smacking Chris Benoit with the most devastating weapon in WCW history. The ref doesn't see it, Luger pins Benoit, and the match is over just like that. Randy Savage didn't even get tagged in here, and yeah, it's another example of a poor WCW main event mixed with a decent mid-card showing. Mean Gene interviews the babyfaces afterwards. It's announced that Sting and Luger will face the outsiders at Hog Wild. Sting says Hog Wild will be a real bad day for Hall and Nash. Luger says the outsiders have pushed all the wrong buttons since coming to WCW, and if they wanted Luger, Sting and Savage to get mad, well, now they've got it. Savage sends a message to Hulk Hogan. The Macho Man says that Hogan won't even make it down the ramp at Sturgis, and Savage won't hesitate to destroy Hogan in front of all his biker buddies. Quite a disappointing end of Nitro then, not much going on in terms of storyline and the match itself was mediocre at best. The question is though, where was the nature boy Ric Flair? Nitro opened up with Shivani and Zabisco announcing that the Outsiders sent in some video footage. We see Hull and Nash spying on Lex Luger and Sting. Luger gets a quote urgent phone call and this leaves Sting all alone to take a beating from the NWO. Rumours are also circulating about a fourth NWO member already joining the group. Then get the match we were supposed to see in last week's main event, the horsemen, including Ric Flair, taking on Sting, Luger and Savage. Ric Flair's absence last week is mentioned but not explained. Zabisco says that people thought Flair joined the NWO last week but here he is, back with the horsemen. Although the participants of the match here are the exact same as last week, except Flair has replaced Anderson, this one was again pretty good with plenty of brawling, plenty of heat between Flair and Savage also, and of course we had a botch from our main man Steve Mongo McMichael. It looked like a pretty painful botch too, but still, the match was going quite well until Jimmy Hart ran to the ring screaming and shouting. Something was going on backstage as the babyfaces stopped wrestling to hear Jimmy out. Apparently, the Outsiders had launched an attack on WCW, and the superstars in the ring stopped the match to go and find Hall and Nash. WCW wins the unopposed dollar point this week. They've given us a real reason to stick with Nitro here, and while Duggan vs. Enos was nothing special, the six man tag was pretty good, even if we didn't see a true finish to the match. Glacier also didn't debut in the first half of Nitro, but it's obvious here that they're saving the best for last. Mean Gene interviews the Nasty Boys next. Nobs and Sags say that they're getting a lot of hate from the boys due to their past friendship with Hulk Hogan. Sting and Luger appear, the Nasty Boys' opponents in tonight's main event, and the babyfaces want to know whose side are the Nasty Boys on? Are they on WCW's side or are they part of the NWO? The Nasty Boys tell Sting and Luger that it's none of their business. Steve Regal vs Randy Savage followed and fortunately we got a decisive winner here. It was a great match between these two, so good that Sting and Luger came out to watch the bout from those empty ringside seats. Savage hits the elbow drop for the victory. Sting and Luger then approached the NWO limousine where they found a wreath. The flowers had a message that read, condolences on the death of WCW. It's also announced that Randy Savage will get a shot at the WCW Champion after Hog Wild, but in order to get this title shot, the Macho Man cannot show up at Sturgis for the pay-per-view. Too many weak finishes here unfortunately, the Savage vs Regal match was good, and the whole wreath on the limo thing was pretty well done too, but the unopposed hour point goes to Raw this week. I definitely would have switched over here to see what the WWF was up to. 
The promo video freezes and Tony Schiavone gets word that Sting and Luger are the ones who ordered the tape to get stopped. We go back to the control room and Sting is giving one of the producers a hard time. The guy says the NWO paid for the video and Sting really couldn't care less. The thing is, almost the entire video already made it to TV so it's a little bit pointless. Also it just felt way more cool when the outsiders invaded the production truck. Sting ends the promo by saying there's free pot pie and Mountain Dew in his trailer and I'm not making that up either. There's free pot pie and Mountain Dew in our trailer, let's go. Oh, in Atlanta. Yeah. It's a point for WWF Raw and really it was the long replay of last week's attack that lost Nitro the point. Sting and Luger are completely jacked up on pot pies and Mountain Dew, so the nasty boys better watch out. The Steiners show up to provide additional security, but come on guys, fucking Ming is out there, no additional men are needed. Jerry Sag starts things off by attacking Luger, Luger's comeback gets stopped with a big boot and the nasty boys double team the total package. Nobbs and Luger in the ring now and Luger manages to take care of both nasty boys before Sting gets tagged in. A jumping clothesline gets followed up with a face crusher, but Jerry Sags breaks up the pin attempt. Sags trips up the stinger and this allows the nasty boys to go on offense. Sags gets tagged in and he hits a big clothesline in the corner. Nobbs comes back into the match and Sting takes more punishment in the corner and then we get to see more teamwork from Sags and Nobbs when Jerry again comes back into the match. More quick tags keeps the pressure on the baby faces. Sting finds himself in a camel clutch as Luger begs to get tagged in. And eventually Sting creates an opportunity when he gets his feet up during a top rope attack from Nobbs. Luger tags in, he cleans house with some clotheslines and a power slam, but when he tries to go for the torture rack, Brian Nobbs breaks it up. This results in Sting coming in without a tag and the four men begin brawling. Legal men Jerry Sags and Lex Luger fight on the outside and Rick Steiner hits a Steiner line on Sags after the nasty boy accidentally hit the dog face gremlin. Sags gets rolled into the ring, a legal man Sting applies the scorpion deathlock and the referee calls for the bell, Sting and Luger win via submission. Typical WCW officiating here but what can you do? Mean Gene interviews the winners afterwards, Mean Gene reminds Sting and Luger that the limousine is still sitting at the entranceway and the babyfaces decide to go down to the limousine to see who's inside. When they open the door someone throws a bag out before the limo drives off and Nitro goes off the air with a cliffhanger, what was in the Turner bag and who was in the limousine? Well, thanks to the WWE Network we have unreleased footage of what happened when Nitro went off the air. Sting opens the bag and there's a note inside from the New World Order. It reads, Ray was right, there are four guys, or are there five? See ya in Sturgis. The final point goes to WWF Raw. The tag team match was seriously by the numbers whereas the Battle Royal was something different. The little note from the NWO was cool but remember, this didn't air on TNT. The Outsiders defeated Lex Luger and Sting when referee Nick Patrick turned heel. Not a bad match but nothing great either. The NWO having their own slimy referee was a great idea though I wish it was anyone else but Nick Patrick. Sting and Lex Luger then show up saying that there may have been controversy last night in Sturgis but the Stinger and the Total Package want to clear up any controversy right now and a challenge is laid out for the new world order. Sting and Luger get in the ring and they call out the NWO but neither Hall Nash nor Hogan appear while the outsiders take on Sting and Lex Luger. There seems to be some chaos in the truck but Bischoff says we're still going to see the tag team main event. The outsiders appear from the crowd and then Lex Luger makes his entrance but there's no Sting. The match is going to kick off with Luger all on his own but the total package does a good job of taking care of both Scott Hall and Kevin Nash. Sting then appears from the audience and he hits a top rope clothesline on Big Sexy. Sting and Luger clean house and the outsiders take a moment to regroup. Hall and Nash try to attack their opponents from opposite sides of the ring but it's no use. Luger takes care of Scott Hall while Sting hits a plancha on Nash. 
Scott Hall makes the save for his tag team partner and all four men eventually get back in the ring and there's absolutely no control here. Sting takes a big boot before getting thrown over the top rope but Nick Patrick doesn't call for a DQ, something that makes Eric Bischoff very suspicious. The Stinger comes back in with a double clothesline and Scott Hall takes a face crusher. Bobby Heenan wonders why there aren't any tags here and why is Nick Patrick not trying to get a little order in this matchup. Sting gets the outsiders in perfect position for a few Stinger splashes but he misses when going for Scott Hall. Just then the horsemen run into the ring and Scott Hall and Kevin Nash leave. Our match is over. Nick Patrick left the ring too and Bischoff tries to explain that the horsemen ran down because of the bad officiating during the bout. Heenan says to take a good look at this, the four horsemen have actually came out to help Sting and Lex Luger. And then we see a replay that clearly shows Nick Patrick helping Scott Hall when Sting went for the Stinger splash. Mean Gene interviews Ric Flair afterwards and Flair says he doesn't like Sting and Luger but he will play ball with his old enemies because they represent WCW. Flair says that Mongo will take care of Nash, Double A could destroy Scott Hall and whoever the fourth and fifth man is Chris Benoit will take both of them out. At Clash of the Champions Flair and Hogan are gone as style and profile and Nitro comes to an end with Mean Gene promoting the Clash special this week on TBS. Not much of a wrestling match to end Nitro but still very exciting stuff. The NWO are still being positioned as a real threat to WCW even after gaining the World Heavyweight title. Harlem Heat vs Rick and Scott Steiner vs Sting and Luger in a WCW tag title triangle match would turn out to be a fun bout that was ruined thanks to the outsiders showing up. Scotty Steiner had the match won but bogus referee Nick Patrick stopped the three count, pointing to Nash and Hall in feigning surprise. Mean Gene interviews Patrick afterwards and Patrick tries to explain himself but we all know that he's a sneaky little shit. Lex Luger talked some absolute nonsense when he told Mean Gene Okerlund that he and Sting are gonna quote strike with a different wavelength. What is that supposed to mean? Luger and Sting have a surprise in store later on in the show and Sting absolutely saved this promo before moving on to our next match. Remember when Lex Luger said he and Sting are gonna attack on a different wavelength or some nonsense like that? Well here it is, it's a master plan from Sting and Luger that will put an end to the new world order. Luger, Sting, Double A and Ric Flair are in the ring and Sting wants the other two members of the Horsemen to come down so Benoit and Mongo make their entrance. Mean Gene comes down also and Sting says that he and Luger can fight with the horsemen just like they usually do or all six men can take a step back and realise that there's a big problem in WCW. Sting says that he and Luger don't trust Flair and Arn Anderson and they never will but Sting also knows that the Enforcer and the Nature Boy shed blood, they poured sweat and they cried tears inside a WCW ring. Arn Anderson, Ric Flair, The Total Package and Sting, all four men are WCW. Sting says that in 30 days time the War Games match is going to take place, a match that was created for the Horsemen and with all due respect to Chris Benoit and Steve McMichael, that's right guys, respect Mongo, Sting says that himself, Luger, Anderson and Flair are the only men with experience inside a War Games matchup. The Icon wants to form a War Games team with Anderson and Flair in order to put an end to the New World Order. The Enforcer says he doesn't like Sting and Luger, Lex is a body guy and his looks won't get him very far in a match like War Games. Luger says he and Sting give 100% and Anderson needs to consider Sting and Luger's dedication before saying no. Anderson wants to know if Sting can truly be on the side of the horsemen for just one night. Can Sting forget about the little stingers in order to survive war games and win war games? Can Sting go into the gutter in order to make his opponents submit? And more so, 
Will Sting promise not to submit himself when the going gets tough? Sting says that Double A and Ric Flair know what he's all about, and he's offended that Anderson would even ask those questions. The Stinger won't give up. Ric Flair says that this decision comes down to Benoit and Mongo, and Mongo looks like he just remembered he left the oven on at home. Chris says that he's waited his whole life to become a horseman and to get an opportunity like War Games, but whatever Flair and Anderson want to do, he will follow. Mongo bangs on about his Super Bowl ring and this gets a loud chorus of boos from the audience. Steve says if Sting and Luger mess this up, then what the NWO do will feel like a walk in the park once Mongo gets through with them. Arn Anderson confirms it. He, Luger, Sting and Flair will form Team WCW to take on the New World Order at Fall Brawl 96. I'm giving the point to Nitro here, an excellent promo from WCW that again highlights how dangerous the NWO truly is. If Sting is willing to team up with the Horsemen, then you know that some serious stuff is going down in World Championship Wrestling. Mean Gene interviews Sting and Luger backstage and Lex says he's in the frame of mind to kick some behind. Fucking brilliant. The Stinger thinks that this match later with he and Luger taking on Benoit and Mongo was set up by Flair and Anderson as some sort of gut check or some sort of test. Sting thinks that Flair and Double A don't trust their partners at war games, but Sting says he and Luger are happy to pass the test tonight on Monday Nitro. A decent promo here by the way. Bischoff and Heenan talk about the upcoming main event and Bischoff still thinks DiBiase is the fifth horseman. Benoit and Mongo vs Sting and Luger is going to close our show tonight and honestly, it hasn't been a bad Nitro at all, I've sat through worse. We have an absolute fight to start things off as Mongo focuses on Lex while Benoit goes after Sting. After a lot of brawling, we get left with Mongo and Lex inside the ropes. Mongo hits an inverted atomic drop and Lex fires right back with a clothesline. McMichael is able to hit a back elbow followed by a stun gun and so far our main man Steve Mongo McMichael is keeping it together pretty well. Benoit gets tagged in and Lex takes a short arm clothesline. Benoit slaps Luger around a little before the horsemen begin making quick tags, keeping Luger away from his tag team partner. Lex takes a neckbreaker and a leg drop from Benoit, and when Mongo comes back in, he hits a backbreaker before telling Benoit to come in and take Luger out. I think McMichael was expecting a double team move here, but Benoit says no. Not sure exactly what Chris says here, but he's definitely directing Mongo. Benoit comes in and both he and Luger take each other out with a double clothesline. The fans are on their feet hoping Luger can make the tag. Sting comes into the match and Benoit takes a baiting. A back body drop gets followed up with a face crusher. Sting then goes for the scorpion deathlock, but Mongo makes the save, taking a dropkick to help out his fellow horsemen. Luger and Mongo battle on the outside while Benoit and Sting continue working inside the ring. The crowd then begins to roar as Hollywood Hogan approaches Steve McMichael. Hollywood lures Mongo around the ring where Scott Hall and Kevin Nash launch an attack. The referee calls for the bell as the NWO begin beating up everything that moves. Benoit takes the outsider's edge while Sting takes a jackknife. And then the crowd goes completely crazy as Ric Flair and Arn Anderson hit the ring and they momentarily get the upper hand on the new world order. The NWO end up getting the better of Flair and Double A by spraying their faces. Flair gets his trademark golden hair spray painted black by Hollywood Hogan. And man, people complain about NWO run-ins and I know this gets repetitive as the weeks and months go on, but it's absolute insane heat here on Monday Nitro. The ring is filling up with garbage and the crowd is going nuts. It's so loud and it's so messy, and you can see Kevin Nash in particular is totally feeding off the audience. The NWO leave the ring and they approach Eric Bischoff. Bischoff runs away and the New World Order take over the commentary desk. Hulk Hogan says anything less would be too civilized. The cameras go back to the ring and it's absolute carnage. 
and the show ends with a replay of Ted DiBiase's tease for next week's episode of Monday Nitro. Even though the main event was nothing to write home about, the end of this week's WCW show was absolutely brilliant. Luger, Sting and Rick Steiner are in the ring ready to go, but the camera cuts away to the four horsemen. Flair and company want to know who's inside that limousine, but there's no one there. With their joint deduction skills, the horsemen come to the conclusion that whoever was in that limousine must now be inside the building. So they run back into the arena as Nitro takes a commercial break. We come back and we have Luger and Rick Steiner in the ring. The two men lock horns and Lex does a little flexing. The two men lock up again. Nick Patrick walks into Luger when the competitors break a lock up and Patrick calls for the bell. It's over after 38 seconds. Luger has been disqualified and the Steiners win the match. The Steiners don't want to take this victory but the decision is final. Patrick gets out of the ring, Sting and Luger follow him and that's it, that's the match. I have to give the point to Raw here, I have no other choice. WCW Nitro are completely pissing this episode away. The crowd goes wild when Ric Flair gets tagged in. We see footage of Flair and Luger chasing Nick Patrick. Nick lures Sting and Luger towards the limousine and we see Ted DiBiase getting into the vehicle. Sting wants to commit murder so he throws a fucking rock through the window. But then it gets better. Our babyface heroes steal a police car to chase the NWO. Sting and Luger may have just saved Nitro from a complete beating from the WWF. Ted DiBiase is talking to the mystery man inside the limousine and we hear Sting's voice. Sting is shouting at DiBiase and the audio levels are all messed up, almost as if it's a voice recording that's getting played back. Tired of this stuff, this DPA stuff, oh, no. don't trust anybody, he's gotta go, you know why? Luger shows up and Lex wants to know where Sting is. What have the NWO done to Luger's best buddy? Well, fuck you Lex Luger because Sting hops out of the limousine and he attacks the total package. Sting has just joined the New World Order. Or has he? The Stinger runs off to another limousine while Hogan, DiBiase and DiBiase's chauffeur continue to attack Luger in the pouring rain. Luger begins to fight back and he runs to the limousine that Sting went to but he can't get in. We go to Bobby Heenan, Mike Tanay and Eric Bischoff and all three men are in total disbelief. They play it really well here as now it seems that Sting has joined the NWO and all hope is now lost. We get a recap of everything that's happened with the New World Order over the past few weeks and when we come back, Bischoff clearly doesn't want to show the footage again of Sting attacking Luger, but the replay rolls and it is worth seeing again. It looks like Sting has joined the NWO and so WCW is now looking in real bad shape. This is going to be a point for Monday Nitro. Afterwards, the NWO promoted their t-shirts again. As the war games cage began to lower, Ric Flair, Arn Anderson and Lex Luger, who looked like he only crawled out of bed, they cut a promo backstage. Sting showed up and Luger wanted to know why his partner attacked him on Monday Nitro. Sting says it wasn't him but Lex Luger doesn't believe Sting. I mean, we all saw Sting attack Luger with the NWO so why should the total package believe him? This war games match was a little different. Because of the animosity between WCW and NWO, the superstars wouldn't stand around the cage but instead they would come out from the back when it was their time to enter the match. Sting came out and it looked like he was a member of the New World Order but if you look closely you'd be able to tell that this wasn't the real Sting. The real Sting did come out a little later and he cleaned house. Sting then looked at Luger and he asked if that was good enough proof that he wasn't part of the New World Order before walking out of the match. Sting walking away here was the beginning of the Crow character within World Championship Wrestling. Luger ended up submitting when the fake Sting applied a scorpion deathlock. Sting shows up unannounced and he's here to talk to everyone involved in World Championship Wrestling. This is a pretty iconic segment right here. 
With his back to the hard camera, Sting explains that he tuned into Nitro last week and he thought he was watching a rerun. He saw himself on TV. Sting also saw commentators, wrestlers and even his best friend doubt the Stinger and he heard Lex Luger saying that he was coming to get him. Sting then showed up at Fall Brawl so he could go face to face with his best friend and Sting wanted to tell Lex Luger that he had nothing to do with the NWO. But before the War Games match, Luger told Sting that he didn't believe him. Sting has given Luger the benefit of doubt for months and Sting has carried the WCW banner for years. So for the people who didn't doubt him, Sting says that he'll still stand for those people. If the fans and wrestlers stand by Sting, then the icon will do the same in return. But for those commentators and those wrestlers and those fans who doubted Sting, those people can stick it. Sting announces that he's a free agent, but he's gonna show up every now and then when we least expect it. And that's it, say goodbye to Sting as we have known him throughout this entire series. Bischoff says that Sting has turned his back on WCW and Heenan says that a bidding war is now gonna begin for one of WCW's most important superstars. It's another point for WCW Nitro. Bischoff has also been saying all night that Sting is in the building, but it appears we have been fooled. It's the bogus Sting who's in the arena, and he's taking on JL. The NWO come out at the beginning of the match and they surround the ring. The fake Sting starts the match off with a face crusher and JL goes for a crossbody. Bogus Sting slams his opponent to the mat. After nailing a Stinger splash, JL finds himself in the Scorpion Deathlock, and then... The real Sting makes his way down to the ring, wearing face paint reminiscent of James O'Barr's Crow comic book character, which in 1994 was turned into a movie starring Brandon Lee. Sting hits his doppelganger with a scorpion death drop, a few elbow drops, a stinger splash and then he applies a scorpion death lock. Heenan thinks Sting has joined the NWO due to the black and white face paint. The NWO get into the ring and they applaud Sting, and Ted DiBiase tries to recruit the real Sting into the New World Order by saying the group is like a family. Kevin Nash says it's time for Sting to break on through to the other side, and Scott Hall says Sting has nothing to show for all the years he's carried WCW on his back. Hall says they brought in the imposter Sting because they knew it would get to the real Sting, and nobody knows about imposters better than Hall and Nash. I, I love this line, by the way. And so, Sting has a decision to make. If Sting joins the NWO, there's no stopping the takeover. Sting calls the bogus Sting a cheap imitation. He says, you get what you pay for, and the real Sting may be out of the NWO's price range. But the only thing we know for sure about Sting is that nothing's for sure. And that's it, that's the last time we're gonna hear Sting talk for a very long time. Not only do we get to look forward to Hart vs Austin, but we also get to look forward to the upcoming Crow-Sting vs NWO rivalry. I can't choose between the two here, I'll let you guys slug it out in the comments section, but I'm giving a point to each show. Fantastic, pivotal promos from both Raw and Nitro. Keep in mind too that the NWO think that they've just got Sting to join the group. Tony and Larry open up Nitro and they talk about Roddy Piper. The commentary team think that maybe the Hot Rod could be the man to lead WCW in their fight against the New World Order. Juventud Guerrero vs Steve Regal is our first match, the TV title is on the line, and we see Sting sitting in the rafters, his crow makeup is now completely covering his face. When the competitors begin wrestling, Six appears in the audience, Steve Regal doesn't look too amused at what's going on here. Six says he's gonna bring the Cruiserweight title to the NWO, and this gorilla right here seems highly invested in what Six has to say. A message is then sent to Sting, make the right choice. The focus was completely taken off the match here, which maybe wasn't a bad thing seeing as this is Crow's Sting, but I just wish it didn't happen during a Steve Regal match. Regal wins via submission. His lordship was supposed to have an interview afterwards, but he must have forgot. Tony Schiavone is left hanging around like a spare dick. Luger goes to apply the rack, but then he gets distracted. Sting is watching the match. The problem here is, how did Luger know that Sting was there? Did he sense him or something? Lex goes after Sting, but the icon turns his back and walks away. Booker T gets awarded a countout victory. 
good stuff here from WCW and another good match on this week's Monday Nitro. Monday Nitro begins and we see Sting in the rafters. The icon's motivations and intentions are still unknown at this moment. Our first match featured Chris Benoit taking on the fake Double J, a fairly decent match with an interesting finish. After Benoit gets suplexed out of the ring, Sting shows up. Sting hits a scorpion death drop on Jeff Jarrett and he leaves afterwards. The match gets ruled as a DQ. Benoit was also about to walk away, but Woman tells Chris that Double J represents WCW and Benoit should help Jeff back to his feet. Chris picks Jeff up by the hair. Norton then gets the upper hand and he kinda falls over when performing a backbreaker, but the crowd are more concerned about something else that's happening inside the arena. Sting has once again shown up and he's watching the match from the balcony. Lex Luger defeated Hugh Morris next with a torture rack. After the match, Luger cut a promo where he talked about winning the upcoming World War 3 Battle Royal, but then Sting showed up. Sting pointed a baseball bat at Luger before pushing the total package away. The Stinger gave Luger the bat before walking off. The crowd booed. Luger and Mean Gene were left confused in the ring. Gene wanted to continue the interview, but Lex walks away. And the match ends with a figure four just like that. Ric Flair shows up wearing an absolute granddad sweater that probably costs a fortune. And even with a bad shoulder, Slick Rick struts in the ring and the South Carolina crowd love every moment of it. Mean Gene gets in the ring for an interview. Jarrett says WCW needs to put their differences aside in this fight against the new world order. Footage is then shown of Sting dropping Jarrett last week. And Jeff says he isn't here to speak about that, he's here to talk about WCW uniting as one. Ric Flair says that Double J is ready to go against the Giant at World War 3 this Sunday. And Flair then tells Benoit, Mongo and Anderson to pay attention because the lead horseman is speaking. Jeff Jarrett is in and he's part of the group. The two men strut to end the promo and we see Sting in the rafters watching the whole thing, wishing he too could go down to the ring for a little strut. Gonna give both shows a point for these segments. Difficult to choose which was better, the in-ring action on Raw was definitely leagues above Nitro, but WCW had some interesting promos that set the stage for what's yet to come. The fake Double J then had his match with the Giant, and Sting showed up to hit a scorpion death drop on Jarrett. Sting is still pissed off that Jarrett didn't really sing with my baby tonight. Giant ended up scoring the win, and the commentators are confused about Sting's motives. It seems like the Stinger is helping the New World Order. During Rick Steiner's entrance, the dogface gremlin shouts at the camera that he's unsure if he can trust Sting. Gee, I wonder if Sting is going to show up in this match. Big Bubba tries bringing the fight to Steiner right from the opening bell, but a big takedown puts Bubba in his place. Bubba tries to get a little reassurance from Jimmy Hart, but Rick whacks Jimmy and Bubba's heads together on the outside. And Steiner then hits a double axe handle from the apron to the outside. As the action gets back inside the ring, Tony Schiavone announces that footage from that elusive Baltimore house show was recorded and clips will get shown on WCW Saturday Night. I just so happen to have that episode of Saturday Night right here because I'm a filthy pirate. And right enough, there it is. A few of you did reach out to say that footage exists of this show, so this must be where it's from. The Dungeon of Doom beat the crap out of Chris Benoit, Woman runs down to save Chris, and Woman also ends up attacking Kevin Sullivan, so there you go. Back to the match, a punch to the face and a knee to the chin put Steiner down. Rick gets thrown into the corner, but he counters with a big German suplex that gets a great pop. And then the audience gets distracted as Sting begins making his way to the ring from the stands. Steiner hits a bulldog inside the ropes, and as Sting gets closer to the squared circle, Big Bubba gets clotheslined over the top. Steiner doesn't realize that Sting's right behind him at this point. Rick gets nailed with a scorpion death drop, and this allows Big Bubba to score a pinfall win. Bobby Heenan thinks that this is further proof that Sting isn't on WCW's side as Bubba and Jimmy Hart celebrate in the ring. The point goes to WWF Raw here. Great seeing Sting and all that, but Owen vs Brett was a better overall match. 
The Steiners jump into the ring on Nitro and Rick again challenges Sting to a match. Sting is shown in the rafters and the icon nods his head, so Rick Steiner vs Sting is our main event tonight on Nitro. Bischoff and the Outsiders are excited to see Sting in tonight's main event. The NWO still thinks Sting is going to join the group as Rick and Scott get in the ring. Sting enters through the audience, holding his baseball bat. The icon gets in the ring, and Rick wants Sting to throw the bat away. Sting tosses the bat down and he turns his back to Rick, giving Rick a free shot. The dogface gremlin takes the free hit and Sting gets whacked. The stinger falls to the outside and the crowd are totally loving what they're seeing here. Scott Steiner throws Sting back into the ring and Rick completely pummels the icon. Steiner then goes for a body attack but Sting dodges it. And then we see the scorpion death drop. Sting then picks up the baseball bat and Scott Steiner gets in the ring. Sting moves Scott out of the way and he offers the bat to Rick. Rick goes to once again attack Sting from behind but Scott jumps in to stop his brother. And Sting then leaves the ring. The Stinger approaches the Outsiders and Bischoff at the commentary table. The NWO tells Sting they have a contract for him, but Sting just points his bat before leaving again through the audience. Nitro ends with the NWO saying Sting will join the faction eventually, and Bischoff hopes to see Roddy Piper live next week on Monday Nitro. Giving the final point to Nitro, the wrestling match on Raw was better, but Nitro provided much more entertainment with their final segment. Sting was just so intriguing during this time period, and keeping fans in the dark in regards to his intentions was a recipe for success. The Steiner brothers stand in the ring and they look to the audience. The Stinger has to be somewhere and the Steiners want answers about what happened last week. After waiting around for what seemed like an eternity, the Stinger shows up and he starts making his way to the ring from the audience. At the same time, the fake Sting also makes his way to the ring, and the fake Sting holds the ropes open for the real Sting to get inside. <laughs> this is gonna get annoying. So, fake Sting puts his hand on the real Sting's shoulder. The real Sting doesn't take too kindly to this, and so fake Sting threatens the real Sting with a baseball bat. The real Sting produces a bat of his own and he pushes fake Sting's bat to the ground. Both fake Sting and real Sting turn their backs to the Steiners, offering a free shot, but the real Sting then hits a scorpion death drop on the fake Sting. The Steiners then give the real Sting his bat back, as the commentary team say that this is a huge blow to the New World Order. Sting attacking his doppelganger must mean that the icon is gonna fight for WCW, but who knows. Sting gets out of the ring and the segment comes to an end, and it's another point for WCW Nitro. Because the Outsiders are also going to battle the faces of fear at Starcade, we should fully expect a run and finish here. Scott Hall and Kevin Nash, in my opinion, rank high on the Ming Manly meter, not quite hard and heat levels, but definitely up there. It starts off with Hall and Ming battling inside the ropes while Nash fights the Barbarian on the outside. Nash manages to trip up Ming and this allows Hall to hit a clothesline. Everyone on the ground level in the audience is standing up for this one. Hall tries to finish it early but the Barbarian breaks up an outsider's edge attempt. Nash makes Barbarian pay for his sins with a big boot. The match is given absolutely no time to settle as the Dungeon of Doom's Big Bubba hits the ring. We think he's going to attack Hall and Nash, but no, Bubba goes after Ming and it's made clear that Bubba is now a member of the NWO. Kevin Sullivan and Conan hit the ring as the referee throws the match out. More Dungeon of Doom members come down to fight before the giant makes his way down the entranceway followed by Six, Wall Street, Vincent and Buff Bagwell. More WCW guys come down and we learn that Scott Norton has also joined the NWO after he attacks Ice Train before going on to attack more WCW guys inside the ring. David Sammartino is here <laughs> and for some reason he's attacking WCW guys. The crowd really pops when Sting makes an appearance. Aaron Anderson grabs Sting and the icon nails double A. This makes Steve McMichael attack the Stinger along with Rey Mysterio but Sting takes care of both men before leaving the ring. Sting didn't touch a single member of the NWO here, 
In the commentators are left confused by Sting's actions. The tag match was absolutely nothing to write home about, but the brawl between WCW and NWO was fantastic. We have new NWO members and the mystery of Sting continues to intrigue. It's a point for WCW Nitro. Lex pins his opponent but the giant gets out by throwing Lex into the air and Luger falls on Mark Curtis. We now have no referee. Luger hits a body slam but the crowd notice Nick Patrick coming to the ring. Lex picks giant up for the torture rack but Patrick kicks Luger. This leads to Lex pushing the crooked referee out of the ring. Sting then appears from the audience and back inside the ropes, Luger tries another torture rack but Six shows up to break the hold. Six gets out of the ring as Sting enters, Sting pushes Patrick with his bat and Sting then says something to both Luger and the giant before leaving his bat in the middle of the ring. Sting then disappears as Luger tries to grab the bat but the giant puts his foot on the weapon. Luger decides to hit a low blow and this allows Lex to beat the giant with Sting's bat. Lex pins the giant and the crowd goes nuts as Luger wins the match. As mentioned, it's worth sitting through this one just for those final few moments, it's easily the loudest pop of the night. Lex leaves the ring and the giant stands at the entranceway wondering where the rest of the NWO were when the big man needed them.